Hello friends, now I will be talking to you regarding general cardiology, in this I will be talking to you regarding pulse, JVP, murmurs and heart sound. So, first of all we talk about pulse. Normal heart rate is 60 to 100 per minute and bradycardia that is heart rate below 60 heart rate below 60 per minute. It is seen in athletes elderly person this is nor normal physiological condition and during sleep also so these are physiological conditions normal physiological condition okay now what are the pathology, pathological causes of bradycardia they include hypothyroid hypothermia they include raised intracranial pressure deep jaundice complete heart block these are some of the pathological causes of bradycardia. Okay. Regarding tachycardia, heart rate more than 100. more than 100 per minute it can occur normally in exercise anxiety fever hyperthyroid atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardias, these are some of the important causes of tachycardia. This was the bradycardia and this is the tachycardia. Now we talk about the character of pulse, pulse character. First of all, we talk about water hammer pulse. And this water hammer pulse is also known as Corrigan pulse. Corrigan pulse also known as collapsing pulse. It is seen in conditions 
like aortic regurgitation seen in hyperthyroid seen in beri beri Paget disease, severe anemia, and sometimes it may even occur in pregnancy also. Now, we talk about slow rising pulse. slow rising pulse. This is seen in aortic stenosis. We talk about pulses paradoxes. So, before I talk about the pulses paradoxes, let me explain to you what exactly is the pulses paradoxes. In this, during when the patient is having normal breathing, at the end of inspiration, at the end of inspiration, the systolic BP falls more than 10 millimeter of mercury. What do you mean by this? Suppose you are checking the uh, patient BP. His BP, systolic BP is 130 at the time when he has done the expiration, okay, expiration. And now he take inspiration. At the end of inspiration, when you check his systolic BP, his BP has come to 110. 130 at a time of expiration at the end of inspiration is 110. So, there is systolic fall of 20 millimeter of mercury. So, any in this case, so any condition where the fall is more than 10 millimeter of mercury is what we call as pulses paradoxes. It means what? You can pulses paradoxes, you can definitely very sure about after checking the blood pressure systolic BP. Although in many cases in pulses paradoxes at the end of uh, inspiration the pulse may slow down or as you can say the volume or pulse may uh, volume may reduce or the pulse may even disappear also in some cases. So, we can say pulses paradoxes, but remember you can be very sure by checking the systolic BP. So, now let us see what are the conditions where we can see, where we, we see pulses paradoxes, we see in asthma, COPD, cardiac tamponade, severe hypovolumia. they are some of the important causes of cardiac tamponade. Also, pulses paradoxes, cardiac tamponade, pulses paradoxes, where we see a uh, few condition. Next, we have <coughs> pulses alternance. It is seen in severe left ventricle failure, left ventricle failure. Let me explain to you, what do you mean by pulses alternance? In this the pulse
look at this thing. pulse is coming at regular interval but when you are feeling the volumes it is up and down it is not constant and this is we call as pulses alternance remember here rhythm is also equal because same time of, of uh, this change varying volume of the pulse we see in atrial fibrillation also but their rhythm is not normal what will happen in af let's see like this what you are seeing varying volume but even this is not rhythm rhythm is also irregular okay so what we call as irregularly irregular pulse pulse is seen in atrial fibrillation then we have dichrotic pulse there are two peaks one peak in systole and the other peak in diastole and it is seen in dilated cardiomyopathy dilated cardiomyopathy then we have pulses bisphrians in this we get two peaks in systole remember in dichrotic two peaks but one in systole and other in diastole so this is seen in ar ar with as and h o c m so these are the causes of pulses bisphrians now i will be talking to you about the jvp jugular venous pulsation that we see in internal jugular vein normal height of jvp is about 6 to 8 cm of blood this is important point to know in actually when patient we are looking at the jvp of a patient we are looking the height of the blood where the pulse is coming so it indicate the centimeter centimeter of blood height now normal jvp is a wave form it is a form of a wave this how we differentiate the jugular pulse from the carotid carotid comes like a jerk and this is like a wave wave pattern this we can occlude carotid we cannot occlude in this we have a definite upper level and that we what measure as the height of jvp carotid doesn't have a very uh, any upper level and remember when we measure the height of the jvp as we have a definitely upper level and we measure the height from the mid right atrium right atrium this height we measure what we call as height of jvp okay so now we talk about what are the pathological conditions where we get abnormalities in jvp pathological conditions no, non pulsatile jvp
you are seeing the JP, but there is no pulsation, no waveform, it is a fixed that is classically indicate superior Venakawa obstruction. which is usually seen in carcinoma lung in the apex of lung non pulsatile JVP. Raised JVP that means the height of JVP is more than 8 centimeter of the blood. It is seen in right heart failure or fluid overload. Then we talk about A wave, prominent A wave. As you know, A wave is produced due to atrial contraction. The prominent A wave is seen in tricuspid stenosis, pulmonary arterial hypertension but we get Cannon waves Cannon wave are nothing when the atria contracts against the closed tricuspid valve so we get very very prominent a wave and this is seen in complete heart block and a v dissociation and with AV dissociation. Then we talk about prominent V wave. This is seen in classically tricuspid regurgitation prominent X descent it is seen in constrictive pericarditis cardiac tamponade prominent Y descent and you know it very well that Y descent is produced in JP when the tricuspid valve opens. It is seen in constrictive pericarditis. And one more thing in cardiac tamponade, Y descent is Y descent very slow. in cardiac tamponade. Okay. So, these are some of the abnormalities that we see in JVP. Then we have a abdominal jugular reflux it is reflux it is not reflex it is not lex it is lux it is the indicator of incipient right heart failure. What is it? How it is done? Those patients who are in the early phase of right heart failure, you do this test. We compress the right mid abdomen, we keep the hand and we compress the uh, abdomen for the 10 seconds. 
and you look at JVP and then you after 10 seconds you stop withdraw it. When you press it the JVP will rise, but when you withdraw your hand that means when you stop pressing there is fall of JVP of more than 4 centimeter that indicate incipient right heart failure as I told you that that uh, in the early phase where the patient is about to go into a right heart failure. Now I will be talking to you regarding the heart sounds. heart sounds. First sound, this is produced due to closure of mitral and tricuspid valve. So, Loud S1 is seen in mitral stenosis, tricuspid stenosis, tachycardia, any condition which is causing increased heart rate in WPW syndrome. Soft S1 is seen in mitral regurgitation, calcified mitral valve, it is seen in bradycardia. and first degree heart block. Heart block. These are causes of soft S1. Second sound, this is produced due to closure of the aortic and pulmonary valve. Normally, a2 comes first and P2 comes after 30 millisecond, right. And this gap increases on normal inspiration and this gap reduces in normal expiration. The mechanism of this is that during inspiration thorax expands. So, there is more and more venous return into right heart. More blood come in the right heart, so it takes more blood to go into pulmonary artery. So, it takes more time to uh, uh, go the blood into the pulmonary artery. So, P2 is delayed. So, remember during inspiration gap is more and during expiration the gap is reduced, it is variable. Now, let us talk about what are the causes of single S2, single S2 it is seen in tetralogy of phallet pulmonary atresia, tricuspid 
अट्रेसिया ट्रंकस आर्टीरियोसिस आइजन मैंगर सिंड्रोम सो दे आर अ फ्यू कॉजेज ऑफ सिंगल एस टू नाउ वेन वी गेट लाउड ए टू इन हाइपर टेंशन loud p2 pulmonary arterial hypertension wide and variable split wide and variable split it is seen in right bundle branch block and pulmonary stenosis but wide and fixed splitting is seen in ast now come the most important question reverse splitting of s2 reverse splitting of s2 or also known as paradoxical splitting of second sound first we learn the basic concept what do you mean by reverse or paradoxical splitting just now i have told you a2 comes first and p2 comes about 30 millisecond later the gap is there okay cut karenge yahan par isi jagah pe so and i told you this split is maximum in inspiration as split is reduced in expiration right this is the normal split but there are few conditions where p2 comes first a2 comes later on and split is maximum in expiration reduce in inspiration reverse just see is total reverse of what is there and this is known as paradoxical splitting of second sound now this is seen in which condition it is seen in left bundle branch block and severe aortic stenosis now we talk about third sound s3 so before i discuss about the condition where we get third sound let me explain to you when the third sound is produced this is the heart and during diastole this valve open and in the initial stages in the early diastole about 70% of the blood come to both the ventricles from the atria so the initial phase of diastole is known also known as rapid filling phase and normally no sound is produced <coughs> in this left ventricle but if a sound has to come that is third sound that's why this s3 is also known as 
filling sound because it is being produced in the rapid filling phase of the ventricles. And one more thing, during <coughs> uh, the rapid filling phase, this tricuspid valve open and you get wide descent. So, wide descent is also produced in the early diastole. It means both the third sound and wide descent, they are seen in early diastole. So, we can say very comfortably that third sound corresponds to wide descent. So, having learned the basic concept about the third sound, now we talk about what are the conditions where we get third sound. There are certain physiological conditions where third sound can be heard normally. It is seen in children, in pregnancy, in athletes. Now, pathological conditions where we see we can get third sound, it is seen in condition like mitral regurgitation, it is seen in coronary artery disease, seen in hypertension, seen in aortic stenosis, seen in H O C M. These are the few conditions where we can get a third sound. Now, we talk about fourth third sound S 4. Now, before I discuss S 4, let us learn the basic concept when and how S 4 is produced. Again, we go to cardiac cycle. So, when the diastole start in the initial state 70 percent of the blood comes in the rapid filling phase as discussed just now and during that time third sound and tricusp and wide descent were seen. Now, near the end of diastole or you can say late diastole this atria contract and they push remaining 30 percent of the blood into the corresponding ventricles and this is known as atrial kick, atrial kick. So, when this right vent atria contract, so you get A wave in JVP and in the left side normally there is no sound is produced, but if a sound has to come that is so called S 4. That is why S 4 is also known as atrial sound, atrial sound. Okay. So, now what are the conditions where we see S 4? First of all S 4 is never physiological in contrast to third sound which is seen in some of the physiological conditions. The S4 is always pathological and especially any condition which lead to stiffening of the ventricle wall that produces S4 because atria has to push the blood from atria to ventricle with a great pressure because there is a reduced distensibility of the ventricles. So, it is seen in condition like hypertension, coronary artery disease. HOCM, aortic stenosis. These are the some of the condition where we get fourth sound. Well, now we talk about opening snap. Before I discuss this, let me learn some. Let's learn some basic concept. Remember, in a normal heart, opening of the valves, AV valve like mitral and tricuspid and aortic and pulmonary, all these valves open without any sound. But in certain disease condition, 
we may get sound even on opening of the valve. So, when the mitral valve <coughs> open, so we can get <coughs> opening snap. So, opening snap we get in mitral stenosis, opening snap. Now, let me explain to you why this opening snap is produced in MS. That means, why the mitral valve open? Normally, not mitral valve open without any sound, but why this sound is produced in mitral stenosis? Let us learn the basic concept. Here is the heart mitral valve. Now, mitral stenosis is there, mitral valve area is reduced. So, during MS, left atrial pressure increase, the increase in left, left LA pressure is increased. Increased LA pressure is the hell mark or the diagnostic feature of or correct statistic feature of mitral stenosis. The normal mitral valve area, this mitral a, 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 a LA pressure is about 4 to 8. Now, in this in MS the pressure may be as high as 20 millimeter of mercury. So, now with a great pressure valve open even try suppose you open your door in of your room slowly, but if you push with a great pressure it the sound the opening of the your door will produce a great sound, something like that only so called opening snap, opening snap you get. Similarly, opening of uh, opening of aortic and pulmonary valve they do not produce any sound, but in some condition they may produce a sound we call as ejection click, ejection click. And this is seen in aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis. Okay. Point to be noted opening snap is being produced in diastole. This point should be very, very clear. So, diastolic sound are third sound, fourth sound, and opening snap. This is a systolic sound. Now, I will be talking to you about the murmurs. First of all, we should know what is the grading of murmur. Grade 1 murmur we hear only after some special maneuvers like hand grip. or valve salva. That means, if you auscultate normally you do not appreciate any murmur, but if you do some special maneuver like this what I am talking to you, you hear we call as grade 1. And whatever murmur we hear normally in our routine clinical practice they come in the category of grade 2 and grade 3 depending on the intensity of murmur. There is no objective difference much. But grade 4 we call a murmur if a murmur has associated thrill we call as grade 4. Grade 5 murmur which we can hear with even stethoscope is slightly above the chest slightly if you can auscultate we call as grade 5 and grade 6 murmur where you do not need stetho, you can just feel and say patient has the murmur. Right? This is how we go for the grading of murmurs. So, now let us see what are the types of murmur we get. We get early systolic murmur. VS very small VSD, VSD very small. Point to be noted in a normal VSD we talk about you always get pan systolic murmur, but if VSD is very very small, so we may get early systolic murmur. 
similarly VSD with pulmonary arterial hypertension you get very we get early systolic murmur. Similarly, in, in early tricuspid regurgitation early stage especially in drug abuser where patient may have TR without pulmonary arterial hypertension without pulmonary arterial hypertension, you may get early systolic murmur. But still I want to make your fundus clear that normally when you talk about TR, you get pan systolic murmur. So, remember two things VSD and TR, if you just simply talk about without this specification, you should talk about pan systolic murmur in VSD and TR, but here we have some special thing very small VSD or VSD with PAH or uh, TR in drug abuse without PEH you may get early systolic murmur. Now conditions where we get mid systolic murmur this you get in AS and this you get in pulmonary stenosis. Okay. Now, I talk about late systolic murmur. This we see in MVP and papillary muscle dysfunction. Papillary muscle dysfunction is classically seen in acute myocardial infarction. As far as diastolic murmur are concerned, early diastolic murmur is seen in AR and PR, early diastolic. mid diastolic murmur MS, TS, mitral and tricuspid stenosis, Austin, flint murmur which is seen in severe AR, carry comb murmur. which is seen in acute rheumatic fever or rheumatic carditis to be more precise. Graham steel murmur which is seen in severe pulmonary regurgitation. Point to be noted all the named murmur they are diastolic. Now, we talk about late diastolic murmur. This is seen in atrial myxoma. Although the murmur heard in atrial myxoma can sometime be mid diastolic murmur also. And this is so called tumor plop also. It may come in the differential diagnosis of mitral stenosis, but if you change the posture of the patient in this the murmur may disappear or, or may change, but this may come in the category of both mid and late diastole. Now, continuous murmur.
continuous murmur is seen in condition like PDA, coarctation, of aorta, lutum, basher syndrome. The lutum basher syndrome is nothing but MS plus AST. This is lutum basher syndrome. Then we also get continuous murmur in AV fistula, it may be pulmonary or coronary AV fistula. Now, we talk about dynamic auscultation. What do you mean by dynamic auscultation? We do certain maneuvers, either physiological or pharmacological, which can change the intensity of murmur that we call as dynamic auscultation. So, let us talk about some physiological effect of respiration on the intensity of murmur, M for murmur. Now, what happened? So, what we ask? We ask the patient to take a deep breath, he take a, he in a inhales, he takes a deep inspiration and he stops. So, all right sided sounds and murmur, they increase on inspiration. So, all right sided sounds and murmur, they increase on inspiration. Now, we ask the patient to exhale, he exhale the whole air and he stop, that means he has done, he has done the full expiration. All right side, all left sided sound and murmur, they increase on expiration. So, we can do the some physiological maneuver. So, what we learn all right sided on inspiration or left on expiration, but there is a exception. The only exception to this rule is pulmonary click. is the only exception to this rule, although it is a right sided sound, but it increases on expiration get reduced on inspiration. Now, we talk about certain farmer, uh, now other thing is on change of posture physiology. Effect on standing standing. All murmurs, they get reduced on standing from supine position, but there are only two murmurs, whose, which, whose intensity increases on standing, that is MVP and HOCM. Rest all murmurs in general I am talking about, they get reduced on, on supine position or squatting, squatting. On squatting, the intensity of murmur will reduce of MVP and HOCM. So, in all others murmur will increase on squatting and get reduced on standing, the exception are MVP and HOCM. 
and the two can now one more thing in this condition that is why diuretics are never given not given ok. Now, what why this happen on standing because when they stand the blood is pulled into peripheral tissues and that is why this muscle intensity uh, uh, murmur increases in this that is why in these two conditions normally diuretics are not given because they will further reduce the intravascular volume so the problem will increase further. So, it is a broad guidelines on the murmur intensity of diuretic use. Amyl nitrate. we give amyl nitrate all the murmurs they get reduced on amyl nitrate except MVP, HOCM and aortic stenosis. In these three condition the intensity of murmur increases on giving amyl nitrate right. So, what we learned in the dynamic auscultation that we do certain physiological and pharmacological maneuver by which we can appreciate the change in intensity. If you recall when we talk about grade 1 murmur, grade 1 murmur which normally we are not able to auscultate, but if we use certain physiological or pharmacological maneuvers we can increase the intensity and we can appreciate the murmur. Otherwise also not only in grade 1 when we examine the patient clinically if you really want to be very sure that whatever diagnosis I am making is correct you have to use this dynamic auscultation. Thank you very much.